Hi, welcome to today's fishing channel once again. Um, today I'm going to do another new oily. Um, I've actually just received through the post today my actual um, oily gun, sausage gun, I should say. This is what it's like. Um, I must state that sometimes when you get a new item, it can be a little bit awkward to actually suss out to operate it. Well, the gun, when you're pushing it, actually pushes the uh, lever forward as you can see. Now I wasn't sure how to actually pull that back but if you actually get the hook and push the hook down and just pull that handle back you can actually extract all the way back to the beginning. So I just push that down and pull and there we go. Uh, this is the nozzle which I've got with it. Just stop that in there. When you've got your um, body dough in there, and you just like use the gun to squeeze it out. They come with um, these different tubes. Uh, I have noticed that some of these have got like excess. Um, what do you call it? Yeah, they've actually got like little bits sticking out uh, and uh, what you need to do is get like a little sharp knife and just cut around it and remove those excess or otherwise it will probably like uh, cause a little bit of um, problems with your uh, dough when you squeeze it out so <coughs> like you know as you can see there all you need to do is get a knife and just trim away that little bit of plastic there and then it should be okay. Now I've been into um, an Indian shop today and um, I just want to let you know that I've picked up some food colouring uh, red colour. Now these aren't actually full, these are like just 400 grams and it's like a half a tub full. Um, I've got red food colouring, yellow food colouring and green food colouring. These I got from a, an Indian shop and they were 2 99 each so you know it does probably um, save money and it's worthwhile you know looking around in some of the uh, big wholesale Indian shops to see if you can get other stuff cheaper um, see like for instance a pink natural food colouring liquid one would cost you 87 pence uh, in Asda and you only get like 38 mils so you've got 400 grams there and I'm pretty sure you could make quite a lot of uh, diluted food colouring with that powder but the only thing was I was only able to get green, yellow and uh, red uh, with a little bit of messing around probably later you could always like conjure up some other colours out of it by mixing the uh, dry colours together um, I'm not going to actually use that today, um, that colouring. I'm just going to um, probably use one of the other powder colours I've got. Uh, vanilla essence. I've um, got this today because I've seen a lot of uh, people do use vanilla in some of their boilies, which I'll probably use a couple of teaspoons of that today. Um, I'm going to be using a bit of soya milk. And today I also bought some medium coconut, desiccated coconut. Uh, I bought some split lentils and some rice flour. And one thing I did not have in my house, which I really did need, was a rolling pin. Uh, these um, I actually bought from the same wholesale as the uh, food column as well. Um, I think this was like 2.99 for um, a 1.5 kilo bag. Uh, split was around about 150, approximately, and the coconut was around about 2 pound 50, and that's the 700 gram packet. Uh, they're rough ideas, aren't they? Because I can't remember what I've done with the receipt, and uh, you know I can't be honest with the full amount. 
uh, the actual cost of each item. <coughs> right, so what I'm going to be using today is rice flour and coconut, um, soya, uh, a couple of teaspoons of the vanilla, I won't be using the uh, red split lentils today, I'll be using that some other time. Uh, I'm going to be using soy flour, fine semolina, cornmeal, and maize, and uh, two eggs. Um, just before I start, I just want to show you the recent ones I made the other day of my boilies. Uh, this is a chocolate chip one, which I made. It is getting quite hard now, actually, and that's what it looks like inside. And this is my ginger nut one. Uh, I actually broke up some ginger biscuits, crushed them really fine, and made a ginger nut uh, crunch because it's got the egg showing. Same as the uh, chocolate one. Uh, this was actually made from drinking chocolate. This with the uh, four last ingredients I just showed you and uh, the ginger nut one is also made with the same kind of ingredients apart from exchanging the chocolate over from uh, that to the ginger and there we go you, you can actually smell them I actually showed a couple of people these last night and I was quite you know chuffed about them uh, one guy said, like, you know, when he had a bit of a cold, he was surprised about these ones. You could actually smell the chocolate coming out, you know, it was unbelievable. Now, I did try using these last night. I didn't really get much hit on the chocolate one, but I did get one or two hits on the um, bite lime with the uh, ginger nut. Um, it was very cold last night. Uh, I wasn't too happy being out in the cold, but I wanted to try out the uh, boilies. And um, no, no, I didn't catch any fish, but as I say, I did catch a few hicks you know, on the old bite alarm. So um, you know, it shows that the ginger nut one probably is working. Um, she said the fish still on her feed properly last night. It, only one person caught one fish throughout the whole night last night over at Clapham Common, which was like a bit of a downer. Um, I'm hoping to. Um, sell some of my boilies on uh, eBay if anyone's interested um, I'm going to keep the ingredients written down and I like start off like very small you know sending like the odd one or two packs of my um, boilies and if people like them and I know they're going to go then I'll probably like start making more and then like you know reproduce them and sell them on eBay bit by bit um, you know, other people are doing that as well, making a homemade boilies, etc. And, um, you know, I know that some guy is actually making quite a lot of money. I'm not here to make money, I'm just here to, like, you know, help out the guys who want to try out different kind of, like, um, boilies, you know, different flavoured ones. Um, I did get some pop ups through uh, yesterday. Which I was going to try last night, but I completely forgot. Um, these are tutti frutti and pineapple. Uh, this one is plum and pineapple, and they really do smell nice. And then I've got a, a mixture. Um, <coughs> so I've not tried them. Uh, I will hope to try them sometime, but. I won't be going out and sleeping out overnight over at Clapham Common anymore because it's just way too cold. I'll probably do some daytime fishing. Um, I might even go there tomorrow, if not Sunday, and try out uh, my last two boilies I made. Chocolate one and a ginger nut one. And hopefully try out the one I'm going to make today. So I'm just going to clear a little bit of this one up. <coughs> going to be doing a few other little bits like making a cup of coffee as well because my throat is kind of like dry so if I dive out of the way the camera is open do excuse me 
just getting the milk to make my coffee. Uh, again, as I say, with all my ingredients, it's just trial and error. I'll uh, start off with two eggs and a mixture of approximately about 50 grams of each um, powder. And if I need to add more powder on, I will add it on and then just like total up the uh, amount of like grams of powder I've used at the end and give you a final update on the powders. So um, I don't really take sugar that much in my coffee, I use sweet tex. I'm just going to get my coffee. The good thing to do is get some like containers, you can get like five containers for a pound in the power shop. So you store like you, you know your boilies in there and put them in the fridge freezer if you've got a big one. Because I've only got a small one, I, I can only use plastic bags at the moment, but you know a handy to like store the contents of the flour in my side. You know what you've got to do is write out, or you cut out the, uh, the label and stick it on the box. So you're having like open packets all the time. Uh, well, I'm just going to get my jar of coffee. I do apologise about this, I should have done this a little while ago, but I only just got in a little while ago. Um, just had my special fried rice, which I could only just about afford, and a can of drink, but the can of drinks made my throat a bit sore. So I just need to get myself a cup of coffee and then I'll start making ingredients. Just trying to check out where my scales are. Those scales. You can also use these for like weighing up your powders as well. Right, coffee, milk. Oh, I need to get a bit more milk out. Isn't it great just watching someone making a cup of coffee? So, so I do apologise about this, but my throat is rather dry. There is a, a new pop up I'm going to be probably doing uh, later in the next week is crabfish and prawns both mixed together make a uh, boilie out of that but the thing is I need to find a way of like making this really chopped up I was going to get a, um, a chop one of these like blenders where it does everything today but it's like 30 quid and I just didn't have the money to buy that so I'm going to have to wait till next week before I get one and then I can make a crabs, uh, crayfish and prawns uh, oily. And one other thing, if you use maggots, always make sure that you close the maggot box up before you put it in the fridge. I just came home and opened the fridge and there's about half a dozen maggots crawling around in the fridge. And I've had to like, clean them out and give the fridge a quick wash out. Uh, so always make sure that your maggot box is closed if you're going to store them in the fridge to keep them cool or as it is getting cold at night time stick it outside right okay um, out of the way. one bowl I need is my mixer and we need my rolling table
Right, when measuring out your ingredients for sale, what you need to do is get a container. You need two, two containers, a big one and a small one. Um, the small one is just the way up separate ingredients and the big one is to put all the ingredients into one container later and then just give it a bit of a stir up right. so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to start off with 50 grams of cornmeal, fine cornmeal Measure it out. Sorry. What I'll do is I'll measure it out in one container and swap it over to another because I need the smaller one to weigh out the other ingredients. 50 grams of soya flour. This is how I make my boilers. You might not actually need all this ingredients. You might be able to get away with just using soya and one other flour. Just gone over the top of that one. Grams of cornmeal, 50 grams of soya, 50 grams of fine semolina. Put that in with the other mix. And then 50 grams of maize meal. Coconut, I'm only going to add um, 25 grams of that actually. Coconut does have a bit of a, you know, a bulky because it's not actually fine um, coconut, it is like you know, kind of lumpy, like so. I'm only going to use 25 grams of. Uh, of the um, desiccated coconut, medium size, so it's cornmeal. Soya. Um, semolina. That's all so far. 50 grams. Okay. Uh, as I said, I'm going to use a bit of the old rice flour because it's going to be rice and coconut. Uh, the rice powder is quite fine, but I'm only going to use 25 grams of that as well. Five grams of the coconut. 
open up. say all my experiments are actually just trial and error so you know <clears throat> if it works it works if it don't it don't it's my expense so now <clears throat> I've got all the ingredients in here just gonna give that a bit of a mix up so in total there should be approximately 250 grams of complete mix here thinking of doing is actually keeping the um, <coughs> eggshell in with the mix <coughs> to make it a bit more crunchy for the fish so um, what I need now is my big bowl and the ingredients are now going to be two eggs So I'm keeping the shell on here, <coughs> but I will actually um, <coughs> crush the shell up a little bit with my hands as well, because they don't actually um, break up all that well in the uh, blender. blend up a bit more finer, a bit later. Just uh, I'm just giving it a bit of a helping hand. I might quickly give my hands a quick rinse. Okay, um, I'm going to use this my measuring bowl I just had. I'm going to use 200 grams of soy milk. Or 200 mils, I should say. Teaspoons of that. No, 
much. You want one teaspoonful of um, vanilla. Yeah, one spoonful of vanilla. Just write this down yourself. I'll just bring the camcorder over a bit more. Uh, excuse me if you see the back of me. Mm, just going to take my top off. It's getting a bit warm in here. start adding the ingredients bit by bit in as a kind of a dye con contents as well so just add it bit by bit you may need all the powder you may not
Okay, the um, contents is still very sticky, so what I'm going to do is add another 15 grams of each of the contents. That's 15 gram, another 15 grams of maize. And as I say, this is always like trial and error, and when I know exactly what I do need, I'll write it down and keep it as a, a memo. As you know, I'm going to make it around 20 grams of each. So in other words, yeah, each powder will be 70 grams. I will give an update on this after. Ingredients I do is just more of a trial and error. Oops. Adding any more of the um, rice or the uh, coconut, they'll still be kept as 25 grams of each. I'm not inside, I need all this. Again, another 5-10 grams of each. I'll put another 10 grams of each actually. It's because I probably added a bit too much soy milk. So in all, all in all now it's 80 grams.
much for the bell. And there we go. So I'm just going to make that all in a couple of big sausages. And do is knead it a little bit first, get some air out. Huh? We can't get it all in one go. Do it in bit by bit. So there we go. Two me gun ready. And just put your gun through there. finger on until you can feel it hit your finger. Take the little bit off. Now you need your rolling table. So it was six to try. And then I also get one of the smaller box archie screws to mix it up with the contents and put a little bit of flour in there. Again, just to use and stop the uh, dough from sticking to each other. You can see it's coming out, <coughs> I haven't even touched it yet. Just going to chop that bit off. And this is where the fun bit begins. A lot better with this than rolling it out in, in hand that I've been doing for the last couple of weeks. Just look how lovely that is now. You put that on your rolling table. You could actually put a bit of um, powder. On, on your tray as well, stop it from sticking if the uh, contents is still a bit sticky. Which mine is because it's uh, sticking to the contents. I think um, my nozzle might be a bit too small actually, so I may have to change the nozzle over. Smaller nozzle than this is actually compatible. 
full. Yeah, I am. Now I'm going to have to do is um, lower that out, push that down. This is new to me, this nozzle. It's the first time I've tried it. I suppose that would probably be one. As I say, I only got the gun today, so I'm not exactly sure what ones are what. I don't think it actually says on these what measurements they are. There's your boilies. So you need the next size up to make your boilies. How I'm going to get that, I don't know. And what you do. And just stick them in your container. Just give them a little roll in the powder so they don't get all mixed together. Any ones you don't like, just put back in the bowl and you can use it again a little bit later. your boilies. Maybe one or two there, which I don't like. Take them out and then add the others into the little box. Give it a little roll and there we go. Well, that's how you make boilies. I do apologise about the mix-up with the, uh, the wrong nozzle, so I only got the nozzles today and the gun, so I wasn't exactly sure what one I needed to use for the table, now I know, I can mark it off with a pen. Uh, I'm going to stop the video now, while I roll off all the other boilies, and uh, I'll come back to you when it's boiling time. Okay, catch you soon, cheers. Welcome back to Steve's Fishing Channel, well I've now completed rolling and making all the uh, boilies. It's got to be a good 200 there. That is all what I've got left. Roll that up. And that too can become the boiling. And that is actually been squeezed 
and dug out with the nozzle so there's nothing left. Even that's empty. Problem is, I can't seem to get this damn thing out properly. I mean, it's damaging the plastic container. So um, I'm going to have to find out exactly how you take this off a bit later. Okay, the uh, water's now boiling. As you can see. Just going to give it another minute or two, make it a bit more hotter. And then I'm going to start <coughs> the process of boiling the boilies. Um, now what I have been using lately is this, but I have got another little device somewhere. What I'm going to do is start using this so it's easier to put in and, and pull it out. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to put them all in, in one go. I'm just going to like put some in this container and just see if like so. Not too many. There is still one or two sticking together slightly, but just run through them and we'll see how it goes. And then Actually, I'm going to have to put them in that, that way because I haven't put enough water in, in the uh, in the saucepan for it to actually sink through. So I am going to have to use this. But when you actually use a, a saucepan, make sure it's like at least three quarters full, so you can actually use a strainer or sieve, or what you want to call it. And what I normally do is I leave them to boil for about up to two to three minutes and then I'll put it on a tray like so covered with a little bit of um, flour stop them sticking to the, the tray itself and then leave them up to 24 hours now if you want boilies like you know you do it late at night and you want them for the next morning the best way to do it is like boil them let them dry for about an hour or so maybe two hours and then once they've dried off a bit stick them in the oven for about half an hour 15 minutes each side just roll them you know like half an hour uh, 15 minutes let them cook up to like about um, say like 220 degrees let them cook for 220 for 15 minutes, go back and then like give them a good old shake and then <coughs> cook them another 15 minutes and they should harden them up ready for you to take out with you the next day. Okay, what I normally do is I'll give about a minute and a half and then give them a stir. I'm all glad that the gun comes today because it is a bit tiring rolling them out by hand all the time. But I still need to exactly find out how to release. It seems to not want to come out properly. turn it but I'm not sure. Thing is it doesn't come with instructions. stuck at the bottom, I'm not sure. 
I'll uh, sort that out a bit later. So anyway, the board is now floating, and that's approximately about three minutes in total. All I do next is scoop them out and put them here on this tray over here. You could leave them in a bit longer if you want to, make them a bit harder. Apparently, the longer you leave them in, the harder they get. I'm quite happy with my ones being like medium, which is about three minutes. Once they're out, let the water gain temperature again and it starts boiling up again before you put the next lot in. Break this one open, and there we go. And the name of this one I'm going to call is uh, what is it now? What ingredients I use? Rice. Well, I'm going to call it. Uh, Coconut rice crunch. So, if anyone's interested in some coconut rice crunch, then send me an email and I'll be happy to uh, sell you some through eBay. I'll give you my eBay address once you uh, email me. Uh, it'd be like a packet of 10 for £1.50, and that includes the postage. I may even put, make it 15 or is at £1.50 including postage it depends um, on how many I've actually made um, I'll only be using a few myself you know I am actually going to be making more different boilies in the future I wasn't planning to do these ones but you know I decided that I would do it and uh, you know I've got so many boilies that I need to go through at the moment This is just some I've actually made different um, textures. Um, this one here is a maize one. Uh, this is a um, what fish did I use? Pilchards and curry. That's curry. This one here is um, peach and syrup. Uh, this one is a standard boilie which I just made and just dyed it green. Uh, chili, con um, chili con carne, hot curry, curry, mild curry. So I've got quite a few here. The problem is um, <clears throat> when I actually make these, I'm going to have to freeze them because they do go a bit like off. After three or four days, they start getting, uh, you know, a bit of mould on them. I don't want them. So, like, if you do, if I do sell them on eBay and you buy them, I'll only get them out th that day when you order them. Let them uh, defrost overnight and then ship them off to you the next day. And hopefully they'll be nice and crisp. The water's brought up a bit more temperature, so I'm just going to put a few more of these in. And uh, wait for that to boil. Mm. You can actually smell a bit of the coconut in there. But all my boilies are trial, you know, kind of things. Um, I do try to test them as soon as I can and as much as I can. Um, they're not, you know, perfect ones like these pop ups. Although these pop ups look like they've only just been made because uh, the dyes are actually 
lingering on to the other pop-ups, which I shouldn't be doing. It's not professionally made like these ones. And mine ain't actually pop-ups, these are boilies. So um, once you actually get your boilies, if, you, if I do sell them and you buy them off of me, what you want to do is use them within 24 hours if you can. If not, then stick them in the freezer until you're ready to use them and then take them out. Let them defrost overnight and then go out and do your fishing. So now all I've got to do is wait for another couple of minutes for these to cook up a bit and then finish these off. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, again, the ingredients is um, 70 grams of cornmeal, 70 grams of soya flour, 70 grams of semolina flour, and 70 grams of maize meal, uh, 25 grams of rice powder, and 25 grams of um, medium diced coconut, two eggs with shell and one tablespoon of vanilla and that's all you need to make the pops up, pop up, uh, the boilies, sorry, the boilies I've just made. <coughs> Throat's still playing up a little bit, i finished my coffee, I need to get another drink so I'm going to end here and thanks for watching, cheers now. Uh, by the way, next time I'll make another um, boilie I'll do another video so you can see the process and exactly what I'm making. Thanks, bye for now.